Hello and welcome to part two of the Oracle Web Logic and Eclipse install and setup. And then in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at some uh, common things that you might have to do in Eclipse and also log into our Web Logic server and uh, look at common things that you would do in there as well. So the first thing we're going to cover is that right now uh, I've already uh, put in a uh, JavaScript file, the jQuery library. This is the minified version, so it's the compressed version. And what you can see up here is that this is giving us an error. That's because the JavaScript validator inside Eclipse cannot read the minified version of the jQuery library. So it's throwing an error because it doesn't know what to do with it. So what would happen is that if we have our project running down here on our WebLogic server and we go ahead and try to redeploy it, it's going to give us a problem telling us that the jQuery library it doesn't know if it's wrong or not, so we can't actually republish to our server. So in order to actually solve this problem, we need to make sure that the JavaScript validator doesn't look at this file. So, well, how we can do this is we can go ahead and select our project, right click, go to properties, and then we're looking for JavaScript. Go ahead and open that up. And then we're looking for include paths. Once you're in this menu, go ahead and go to source, expand this out, go to exclude, and then go to edit. And then we're going to work with the exclusion patterns down here. So we're going to go ahead and hit add, go to browse, go ahead and select the jQuery library, and hit OK. You can also, um, if you have like a library dedicated just to like um, resource files, uh, you can just go ahead and select uh, uh, the entire folder. But if you do that and then you actually add a library file that actually isn't working in there, then you know, you're know you going to get an error, but you won't actually see it until you compile. So, uh, you know, uh, do it how you like. You know, you can either select a specific file or you can select just like a generic uh, entire folder and be generic about it. So we'll go ahead and hit finish. Hit OK. As you can see, the uh, red X has gone away. So now, if we select our WebLogic folder or WebLogic server and hit Republish, it will republish and it'll say synchronize. So that's uh, that's one important thing that you'll have to uh, you, you'll probably run across if you use any type of JavaScript libraries. Uh, the second thing is that um, when you're using the Eclipse IDE. You know, every once in a while, you might accidentally close out a tab that you need. If you if you want to add that tab back, uh, you go to this lower left-hand button right here, and then you can find it in the uh, folder menu uh, in here, uh, whatever you accidentally closed out. So that's, you know, it'll save you some time if you accidentally close the tab out that you actually need. And the last thing what we're going to go over is... Um, you know, say a uh, employee or one of your uh, programmers or, you know, a coworker uh, wants to send you a project that they are working in their Eclipse. If they're running a different WebLogic server runtime, uh, when you import it in and you add it to your project, um, it won't run because it's built on a different WebLogic runtime. And what you would have to do is you would have to select their project right click go to properties but uh, this time what you're looking for is targeted runtime and what you would want to do is you would want to check to see what runtime is running if it's not uh, you know 12c uh, 12.1.1 you would want to uncheck theirs and check uh, what you're running as a runtime and then you will be able to run it on your uh, WebLogic server in your IDE so those are uh, the three tips that I'm going to be covering for Eclipse. And now we're going to move over to the uh, WebLogic server. So we kind of covered that um, localhost colon 7001 and whatever project file or uh, whatever project is running uh, in Eclipse currently will pull up in a browser. So in order to log into your WebLogic server, all you have to do is remove that and type com console. And this will bring you back 
or bring you to the WebLogic Server Console. And if you remember, when we were setting up our, our domain, it asked you to input in a username password. This would be where you would use it. So select WebLogic and then type in that domain password that you set up. So in here, we're going to talk about a few links that you're going to find useful. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is the data source link. So the data source link, this is where you set up your JDBC data sources. Basically, you know, any any connections to an Oracle server, SQL server, MySQL, etc. You would do in here. So to do this, you go ahead and hit new, hit generic data source. Go ahead and name your data source. So I'm going to call mine CentOS Oracle DB. And then for your Gendi ID, this will be the name in which you're going to reference inside your source code. So keep it simple, but descriptive, and don't use any spaces. Our, there is a huge list of data uh, different types of databases that you can connect to. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to select Oracle. Go ahead and hit Next. And what you're looking for is the thin without the XA instance connection. So go ahead and select that. And then hit next. Go ahead and uncheck global support. And then hit next. And then go ahead and enter in your database information. So um, if you need to know how to set up a uh, Oracle DB with uh, on CentOS, just go ahead and look at the comments below and it'll bring you to those videos. So I'm going to go ahead and start typing in this information. And then go ahead and test your configuration. And it should return back connection test successful. If this uh, returns back uh, like that, what it basically means is that it ran this test and it came back with data. Uh, if if it give, uh, if there was an error, then it'll come back with a uh, uh, basically a JDBC error, and you can kind of troubleshoot it how you need to. But it should come back fine. Um, go ahead and hit next. Don't uh, do not hit finish. And that's because we have to actually deploy it to our server, and then you can hit finish. And there we go. Uh, so it's targeted to run on our server right here. So make sure this is actually here. So let's go back to home. Now, once you've defined your data source, every once in a while you might actually want to check to make sure everything's running fine. In order to do this, what you can go to is server or servers. Select your admin server. And then you look for the monitoring tab. Go to JDBC, and as you can see, there's the data source that we set up. And right now, active connections, current count, and high count are all zero because we haven't actually done any uh, data source connections because we have no code running against this. But if there were, then these numbers would change. So you know, you know, uh, you might come in here every once in a while to make sure that you're dropping all your connections that. You, and your code's working right if you're having uh, database connection problems or you're getting uh, errors for uh, databases. The last thing we'll cover, and it's just very briefly, is how to deploy a, uh, a compile project to uh, an Oracle WebLogic. You would never do this uh, for your Oracle instance, but you might do it uh, you know, if you actually have a standalone WebLogic server running. So what you would do is you would go to Deployments, and in here, you can select install and then uh, go through the steps. It's fairly simplistic. As you can see, we do have one uh, auto-generated ear file. And that's basically this project right here that we have. So this is just a very basic look into uh, Eclipse and also to log into our WebLogic server. Since this is running on your box, you know, you can just come in here and tinker with it. And if something were to go, ro go wrong, you can just go ahead and delete it and recreate it. But uh, if you have any questions, you can leave it on the comments below. And if you get enough of them, 
uh, I might create a part three of this video. Thank you for watching.